Hey everyone, today we're going to do a problem where we're going to try and find an element in a two-dimensional array or find whether an element exists in a two-dimensional array. But this two-dimensional array has the property that it is both sorted in the rows and it is also sorted in the columns. So we know, for example, that in this case we have this row is 0, 1, 2, 3, this row is 4, 5, 6, 7, and then also the columns is 0, 4, 8, 12, and so on and so forth. So this is going to provide us with a little bit more interesting problem to solve other than just going through every single element in the array. So let's go ahead and jump right in. And first, do we have any questions about this? Might be worth asking what kind of elements are in the array or how they're sorted, but this isn't really going to be a huge issue because whatever elements they are, we can just make do. So in this case, I'm going to use integers, but it's not really a big deal one way or the other. And another question we could ask is, what is going to happen if there are repeated elements? And this would be a more relevant question if we were actually going to try and find the location of a given element in the array. But in this case, we're doing a slightly stripped down version of the problem where we're simply going to say, does the number exist in the array or not? So we're just going to return a boolean and therefore if we find any copy of a given number in the array it's fine. So we don't really need to worry about whether they're duplicates either. So let's just jump right in and think about how we can solve this problem. And there are a couple solutions. So when I first start thinking about this problem, the, we know one very important thing that they told us or that I told you in this problem, which is that the rows and columns are already sorted. And so that should immediately stand out to us because we know how to do search in a one-dimensional array if it's sorted, right? If we have like one, two, three, four, five, we can do binary search. So we can split the array in half. Let's say we're looking for two. We split it in half and then two is less than three, so we then look at this half here, and then we find the two. And we could do something similar in this case. We could, for example, we could just do binary search on each row until we do, until we find our number that we're looking for, or we run out of rows. And if we run out of rows and we don't find it, then obviously it's not in the array. And that's not a bad solution, and that's a good solution to mention to your interviewer, because you can say something along the lines of, you know, the first thing that comes to mind is that we could do this, but I'm guessing there's probably a more efficient solution, so let me take a minute and I'm going to talk through some other possibilities, but we can always go back to that one if we can't come up with anything else. And this is a great way to show them that, you know, maybe you're going to take a little longer to come up with a solution, but you're doing that because you're trying to find a better solution. Because in this case, if we were to do that, obviously we have a m by n array, or an n by m array, and we know that it takes log of n, big O of log n time to do binary search. So we're going to have m rows times log n columns. So our runtime for this is going to be big O of n, well, it depends on whether which you're treating as the rows and which you're treating as the columns, but I'll say that m rows times n length columns, so log n. And that's fine. That's not a bad runtime, right? That's like pretty decent, but we could do better than that. And that's what we want to think about. So let's look at some other properties of this and see where we can go from here. So we could do the normal 2D, 1D binary search, and that would be fine. In theory, maybe we could also do some sort of other binary search. We could, for example, try and divide it both horizontally and vertically at the same time, and then maybe we could do something with that. We could do that. That sounds complicated to me. I don't know. I can't off the top of my head think of how exactly we would do that. I know that there would be a way that we could do that, but for example, let's say that I'm in this I, that this is my pivot point here. I don't know which direction to move because I know, let's say that I'm looking for number 10. Then I know that 10 could be somewhere in anywhere in here or it could be in this part because it's either got to be bigger in one direction or another or both and in this case it's bigger in both directions. But since they're 
all the numbers go, like the numbers here could be greater than the number here, basically, is the point. So I don't know exactly how I would do that. And I'm, I have another idea for how maybe we could solve this better. So I'm going to look at that instead. So one of the properties that we have here is we could say, let's say if I want to know whether a number is in a row or not. I could say, okay, let's say that I'm looking for the number negative 1, for example. I could look at this column and I could say, okay, the small, or this row, sorry, and I could say, okay, the smallest number in this row is bigger than the number that I'm looking for, and therefore it can't be in this row, right? Because anything, this, anything after this number is going to be bigger, and I know that my number is small. And I can do the reverse of that by looking at the end of a row. And in this case, I could say, let's say I'm looking for 5, then I know that everything is in this row is going to be less than or equal to this last value. And so I know 5 can't possibly be in this row because 5 is greater than 3 and everything else is less than 3 in that row. And then we can do the same thing with the columns too, where I say that in this case, I'm maybe I'm looking for negative 1 again and it can't be in this row because everything's greater than or equal to 0, or sorry, this column. And if I'm looking for 13, it can't be, and I look at the end, I know that the largest number in this column is 12, so 13 can't be in this column. And let's, maybe I can do something with this. So what if I were to say I could go through and I can eliminate rows and I can eliminate columns based off of this property that I have, right? So if I'm looking for 5, I can or let's say I'm looking for negative 1, I can go ahead and eliminate all of these rows because I look at the first value. Or if I'm looking for 5, I can eliminate this row. And I can do the same with the columns. And by what we can do is we can actually look at them and how they intersect and see that we can eliminate, always find a column to eliminate. And that's the problem that we have if we just look at the rows or the columns. Because let's say I look at this row. I can look at the... I can look at the beginning and the end and I can see the range of it and then I could tell whether the number could be in there or not. But if I only look at the beginning or only look at the end, then I can only tell whether it, I can only eliminate my number half of the time. And so what I really want to do is look at the beginning and the end at the same time or the beginning of a row and the end of a column at the same time because if I, when I look at the beginning, I establish a lower bound on the value that can be in the row. And when I look at the end, I establish an upper bound on the value that can be in the row. And so by looking at the end of a row and the beginning of a column, or the end of a column and the beginning of a row, I can say, okay, well, I have an upper bound in the column and a lower bound in the row, or vice versa. And therefore, I can eliminate either a row or a column in every turn. So let's look at this in action here. I'm going to look for 9. And so I'm going to look at the first row, and I'm going to look at the last column, and I'm going to look at this value here. And I know that this is the last value in the row and the first value in the column. So I see 9. I see that 9 is greater than 3, and therefore I know that while it could be in this column here, it can't possibly be in this row. And I'm actually going to copy this down here, and we can see we can actually just remove stuff. So I know that I can just straight up remove that row because there's, it can't possibly be in that row. And now I'm currently, so I would just, in this case, I'm going to have a pointer that's going to point to either I'm going to increment the pointer one row or I'm going to decrement the pointer one column. So in this case, I increment the pointer one row, which brings me to this and now I look at this and I see you, this is still less than 9. And therefore I can eliminate another row because it was the greatest element in that row. And so I can eliminate the row entirely. Now I'm here and now I see 11 is, great, is greater than 9. And so it could be in this row or it could be in the next row, but it can't possibly be in this column here. So I can eliminate the column. And finally... I look at this 10 here, and 10 again is greater than 9, so I can eliminate the column again. So I eliminate because I know that the column can only have item numbers that are 10 or greater. So I eliminate this column, I eliminate 
both numbers in that column, and now I move to here, and each time obviously I'm checking whether the number is the number that I'm looking for or not. And in, that, in this case, I see that it is my number, so I can just return true because I found my number. And if you think about this, this is going to take O of n plus m time rather than O of m times log n time. So this is going to be faster than the other one. And the reason for this is because each turn I eliminate an entire row or an entire column. And so the worst case is that I eliminate all the rows and I eliminate all the columns. And therefore, I'm going to go through m, m rows and n columns, and, that, and that's all I have to do. So that is m plus n, or n plus n. So let's go ahead and actually implement this solution because I think this is going to be a, this is a fairly efficient solution and I maybe could do more efficiently if I did some sort of 2D binary search, but this is going to be a much simpler solution and I think there's value in that. So I'm going to go ahead with this solution and what I'm going to do is exactly what I said. So we are going to create a function called, it's going to return a boolean and I'm just going to call it contains. And you could imagine this being a member of a class called like 2D search or something like that. And therefore, you know, contains, I think, is a decent, out of context, it doesn't quite make sense, but, or it does make sense, but it doesn't have really enough context. But in context, I think it would be a good method name for this. And I'm going to take in my array, and I'm just going to call that R, and I'm going to take in an int x, which is the integer that I'm looking for. So first of all, if the array is empty, then... I know that it's not in the array, right? So I can say that if r.length equals 0 or r0.length equals 0. So r0.length equals 0. So I'm making sure that in this case that both dimensions are non-zero because if either dimension is 0 then it makes no sense. And I'm going to return false in this case because my number can't possibly be in the array. And then otherwise I'm going to initialize so I'm gonna as I said before I'm gonna have a pointer that's going to follow so if this number is less than the number that I'm searching for I'm gonna move my pointer down one and if this number is greater I'm gonna move my pointer over one. So and I obviously have a row and a column index for that so I'm gonna say int row equals zero and int call, call equals R dot length minus one. And you could also do this in the opposite direction. So you could start in this corner and work your way up this way. And either of these would work because in either case you're looking at the end of a column and the beginning of a row or the end of a row and the beginning of a column. So either way you're going to have an upper bound and a lower bound that you can use to eliminate rows or columns. So it doesn't really matter which way you do this. I think that this way is it's a little more intuitive for me, I'm not sure why, but I prefer this. So we will then create a while loop because we're just going to iterate through this eliminating rows or columns until we either find our item or we run out of rows and columns. So we're going to say that while, I'm going to do while loop and I'm going to say that while I, so while row is less than our r0 dot length and call is greater than or equal to zero and what I'm doing here is I'm saying that while we remain within the bounds of this array because as soon as we go out of the bounds of this array for let's say for example that we are here so we've gotten all the way to the end or actually let's say that we're here and we've gotten all the way to the end and we see that let's say that we're looking for the num somehow we got to here and we're looking for the number negative one. So we know that we're supposed to, in this case, since the number is less than our current number, we should eliminate this column and therefore we would move our i or our column over to the left one. And now our column is out of bounds. So even though we still have a row left to go through, there's nothing in that row. So we know that if either of them is out of bounds, then we've you know, gone past our array and can't possibly find the value that we're looking for. So we're just gonna, in this case, we're just checking to make sure that we are within the bounds. And then we're going to say, if our, so if 
the value at this point is equal to what we're searching for, then obviously we can return true because that we found what we're looking for. So if our row call is equal to x, then return true. And otherwise we're going to move either our row or our column point. So in this case we have if our row call is less than x, then as we talked about before, so we're going to increment the, we're going to go to the next row, right? So in this case, if it's less than, if the end of our row is less than the number, then we eliminate the whole row. So we're going to, and to eliminate the row, we increment row by one. So our row pointer by one. And then obviously we're just going to do the opposite otherwise. So we're just going to say else call minus minus. And finally, if we get to the end and we break out of our while loop and we haven't returned true from here, we are just going to return false because that means that we didn't find anything. So let's that's all there is to this code. It's not a lot of code, but it's a little tricky to think about you know, how are we going to do this and in what order are we going to do this in that's going to work the best and make the most sense. So let's go ahead and do a quick example. I'm not going to go through this too much, but let's say we're looking for, we're using this array and we're looking for five. So we're going to pass in the array and we're going to pass in five. So contains r and five. Call this r here. And we see that the length is not zero and r zero dot length is not zero. So we're going to skip down to here. We get that row equals zero and call equals, so in this case, we get that the number of columns is, so r dot length is going to be in this case four, so three. And then we're going to so uh, this is going to refer to this cell here. And obviously there's some, you know, depending on how you represent it, the first, you could say that, you know, this is the, this is R0 at 0, or this is, R, like you could do the 2D array in either direction, but I'm going to do it this way so that it's a little easier. So we have our row and we have our column. We are going to say that row is less than R0.length, which is 4 and call is greater than zero. So we're going to say, and so our row call is this one here, and it's not equal to x, but it is less than x, right? So three is less than five, and therefore row plus plus. So we're going to increment the row by one. And now we're going to come back to the, the while loop again. We're still row is less than r dot, r zero dot length and call is greater than zero and therefore we are going to come down to here it's not we are now at this value this seven here because we eliminated one row and the seven is not equal to x which is five so and seven is in this case greater than x so we're going to skip down to here and we're going to subtract one from call so we're going to now end up here. We do it again. This is greater than 5, and therefore we're going to decrement call by 1. So now we're at this point here, and we see that row our row call is equal to 5, so we return true. And that's it. And it would be probably good in your interview to also test a case where the number is not in the array to prove that that also works but I'm going to let you do that on your own time because I've already taken up enough of your time. And as we talked about before, the runtime of this is going to be O of n plus m because you have, you either, each turn you either eliminate a row or a column and at most you eliminate all the rows and all the columns and therefore it's n rows and m columns and that's O of n plus m. So that's all there is to this problem. Hopefully that made sense. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, let me know in the comments below or on the blog, and I look forward to seeing you again soon.